wealth of nations. Yes. And there are many aspirations for the future. Melissa, mm -hmm. what I will also do, introduce you, perhaps you already have met with our uh, High Commissioner in Nairobi. He's a doctor, Dr. Paul. He studied medicine in New Delhi at the Old Institute of Medical Science. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Paul is now the High Commissioner there in Nairobi. So Great, is he on this forum? He won't be here, but he knows about this activity. Yes, we, 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 we are friends. Oh, and uh, with Honorable Tim Wanyonyi. There we are. Yes. Dr. Malanki, you are going to start, sir. Steve. I'm starting or? Yes, yes Thank you, welcome all to. No, no sir, Steve will start. Steve will start, that's what I thought. Mahesh, uh, Mahesh ji, switch on your video, please. Steve, you good to go. Okay, uh, Namaskar, a very good morning, friends, and uh, welcome to our fourth session on Ayurveda uh, speaker series. It's a weekly uh, speaker series on pharmacological and therapeutic uh, effects of top 75 traditional Ayurvedic uh, medicines. And today's topic is very, very relevant, which is on Ashwagandha Rishta. And uh, on behalf of Canada India, Foundation and all the partnering organizations, uh, we welcome you all and thank you so very much for joining this morning. We have a very mm -hmm. special uh, guest uh, this morning, uh, Member of Parliament from Westlands, uh, Kenya, uh, Honorable Timothy Vanyani uh, West, uh, Wetengula. Uh, yes. Your presence, sir, uh, uh, signifies the continued importance and relevance of traditional medicines in modern uh, context. And uh, we are sure that Kenya will play a very proactive and important role in promoting Ayurveda in Africa, uh, who has seen the first, very first-hand experience of benefits of Ayurveda through uh, the former prime minister's daughter's uh, eye treatment and its success. And uh, your personal story is also very inspiring, sir as it uh, symbolizes hope, perseverance, uh, and iron will and compassion. And we are very, very honored to have you with us. And our special, other special guest is uh, Mr. Mahesh Mahalingam, senior, uh, senior advisor to United Nations, Geneva. Thank you so very much uh, uh, for joining, who has over three decades of experience working on AIDS and public health issues. And uh, thank you for your strong leadership. Of course, our mentor advisor, uh, Renji, thank you so very much for joining. And uh, we have two of our accomplished uh, speakers, uh, uh, Dr. Praneet uh, Ambulkar and Dr. Gagandatta Amin. We are very much looking forward to a very uh, enlightening uh, presentation today. And uh, without further ado, once again, thank you so very much for joining. Uh, Dr. Harish Verma, over to you. Thank you, Sriji. Thank you very much. We are today, we will discuss Ashwagandha Rist. Ashwagandha Rist is a very old traditional medicine and uh, in, the, in the current pandemic, Ashwagandha was used extensively all over the world. The main ingredient of Ashwagandha Rist is Ashwagandha, which is called Vedanya Somnifera, and it has been found very effective neuroprotective, cardioprotective, sleep inducer, anabolic. It is anti-convulsant. It, it also works like anti-anxiety, anti-depression medicine. It is also memory booster. There are a lot of benefits of Ashwagandha. Mm -hmm. But in, in Ayurveda text, this uh, Ashwagandha was used as a Ashwagandha wrist. There's a, it's a polyherbal preparation. What are the benefits of Ashwagandha Rist? We have two experts. They will enlighten us. We have a Dr. Parneet Ambulkar. He's PhD in Ayurveda. He has vast experience of manufacturing and developing Ayurvedic medicines. And he will be enlightening us about uh, pharmacological action of Ashwagandha Rist and how Ashwagandha Rist can be prepared. And we have Dr. Guru Dutt Amin, he has a vast clinical experience of using Ashwagandha Rist. He'll be, he'll be enlightening us about the 
benefits of ashwagandha, how we can use it in clinical practice as well as in our daily practice. So I invite both the guests and we have, as uh, CG has already told, we have two special guests. So without wasting any time, I invite Dr. Madan Thangavelaji from Cambridge, UK to moderate this session and over to Dr. Madan Thangavelaji. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Harish Ji, Namaskar. Satish Ji, thank you so much for uh, holding us all together. And Harish Ji, thank you for bringing us uh, such wonderful guests today. Welcome our special guest, uh, Mahesh Mahalingam, joining us from Geneva. Mahesh Ji, Namaskaram, Vanakam. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks to Timothy, Tim uh, Vayoni from Kenya. Tim, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, and I can also see Melissa on the screen. Melissa. Jumbo. Jumbo. Welcome. To Thank our, you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to our program. Now, for the sake of those who are joining us today, uh, who are here with us on the platform, and also those joining online, if I take a minute to give you the reason for this, why are we doing this event? The reason on my top of my screen, there is a phrase, traditional Ayurvedic medicine. Traditional Ayurvedic medicines are known in the Indian systems for thousands of years, and they have provided benefits and continue to provide benefits for uh, people across the country and around the world. Uh, the World Health Organization has recently set up in Jamnagar, in the state of Gujarat in Northwest India, the World Health Organization's Global Center for Traditional Medicine. And the whole idea here is to take health to and healthcare needs to the people using whatever systems they have maintained and whatever has benefited them. So whether we look at India, whether we look at Asia, whether we look at the Americas or whether we look at Africa, there are traditional approaches that have provided benefits to people. So the decision here was we would take a large number of these traditional Ayurvedic medicines and then give a brief taster. It is only a brief taster. In about 60 to 90 minutes, we will introduce people to these medicines. We will introduce, there are two speakers. One speaker will introduce people to how the formulations are made, perhaps with references to the texts, the ancient texts from where these formulations are uh, called. And that in Ayurvedic uh, terminology, that is uh, the, the group of people who are called the Dravya Guna experts, Dravya Guna, the properties of medicinal uh, material. And the second speaker is there who will, who is a Kaya Chikitsa expert, a person who is a physician who uses these formulations. And they will explain, the second person will explain how and what kind of conditions uh, the formulations can be used. So that is where we are. But before we go into our main program, I just want to invite our special guests to our platform. I invite Mahesh Ji. Mahesh uh, studied at the University of Madras. And for many years, he has been working in Geneva and with the United Nations uh, agencies, and more particularly with uh, uh, the AIDS agency. So Mahesh Ji, Namaskar, Namaskaram, Wanakam. Uh, we'll give you greetings in all the languages possible. Wanakam, sir, thank you for joining us. I know you are busy traveling somewhere, but uh, very happy that you've joined us today. Now, you have seen uh, large <laughs> epidemics and uh, large public health issues. And we want to get, uh, get a feel from Geneva which is where the uh, many WHO, the, the WHO headquarters is based, the United okay. Nations have their Palais de Nations there. Tell us a little bit about how the mood is there in terms of this initiative on uh, traditional medicines and help for the world. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. And thank you for the honor for uh, letting me speak with this distinguished audience. Uh, I am not an Ayurveda specialist, neither am I uh, a, a, a medical doctor from the other side of the world. But what I do have an experience is in preventive health. And that is what I have spent most of my career doing working on, on HIV. 
And in the last uh, couple of years, we've looked at the intersections of HIV along with uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And, and one of the things that is emerging from Geneva, which is uh, the global health center for the world, is the need to make sure that we leave no stone unturned and we, we embrace all systems of medicine, whether they are traditional systems of medicines, indigenous uh, systems, or all modern systems, and, and, and find synergies between the systems to ensure that people have the right to health. I'd like to make three points that I think we should consider. The first is around uh, modernizing Ayurveda and, and, and bringing the hidden gems within the system to the mainstream society. And I think that is what most of you all have been engaged in. And, and that's something we need to do. And, and by modernization, I have essentially two things. And, and, and this I say with a lot of humility and respect that what, what we are looking at is sometimes a very steadfast clinging to the past and thinking that the past is stagnant. And I know you all don't belong to that camp. And I think that is exactly why we are here is to be able to draw from the past, but to be able to modernize, to, to, to innovate, to, to look at new horizons for some of these traditional systems of medicine. I think that's something that's very important. The second point that I'd like to make is around preventive health and the wellness space. This is where I think the future for health remains. The future for health is wrongly perceived to be curative, wrongly perceived to be one of, of, mm -hmm. of finding cures and vaccines. But I think the major world difference will come when we look at preventive health. And that is the space in which Ayurveda has a lot to contribute. And the last point that I would like to make is to look at an in, in the context of emerging ep uh, pandemics and epidemics uh, is to look at microbial resistance. The more we, we spend our time looking at current antibiotics, which we haven't had a new generation of antibiotics for, for ages, we know that we will face a catastrophe very soon. And it is in those times that systems like Ayurveda and other traditional systems of medicine can probably find a new way forward for us to deal with this pandemic. So if we look at these three aspects and combine them together, I do feel that we can provide a complementary and alternative system, which is holistic and inexpensive, and at the same time, that's something that saves lives and prevents lives. And this is where I hope we all can move into the future. Thank Once you. Once again, thank you very much for, for your for your time. Mahesh, before, before we let you go, one question about this long COVID and the unanticipated uh, large numbers of people who are suffering from uh, uh, post-COVID effects. In your, in your travels and in Geneva, do you get a sense of that urgency there that something more needs to be done uh, for this complication that is beyond the reach of contemporary medicine and can be greatly helped with uh, Ayurveda? Definitely, and I think we still haven't fully understood the consequences of long-term COVID. Uh, and, and, and the only way there to deal with long-term COVID is, is, is to focus on uh, building the internal strength of the body uh, and, and the in, internal um, space to, to try and, and, and rebuild immunity uh, from within. And I think that somewhere we have uh, a, a traditional advantage with with systems like Ayurveda. Mahesh, thank you so much for joining us today from Geneva. As you well know, we are on streaming on live on Facebook. We are also recording so that we archive all our talks and you can visit these archives and uh, uh, find out more about what the presentations are today. I don't know how busy you are today, whether you are able to stay with us. If you are not, we were all of us here, all of us on Facebook and YouTube want to thank you for finding time to be here with us today. My apologies. I will leave because I'm in a very noisy, hot, sweltering heat outside. So so kindly excuse me. But where are you, you before, before you leave, where are you joining us today from? Geneva or Lesotho or somewhere? I'm actually else? from Milan. I'm, I'm joining you from Milan. So. Well, wish you a safe onward journey and enjoy your stay 
and uh, wonderful summer weather there in Milan. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. We we now move to our second special guest. Thanks to Mahesh Ji for distilling those three points so clearly. So we have heard the three key points coming from Geneva. And we are now moving to Timothy, who's joining Tim. Uh, Jumbo, Namaskar. Namaste. Hi. Jumbo, Namaste. Jumbo. Jumbo. How are you? Yes. Very happy to have you here with us. I know you're busy with the upcoming elections on the 9th of August, and you are you must be very, very busy there. But we want yes. to welcome you here uh, back to the family. I know, and all of our guests know that you have studied in Punjab. So we can yeah. say Sasrikal. We can also <laughs> and yes. we also know that you studied in New Delhi. So Namaskar. Namaskar. To, Namaskar. Sri Thank Sri you Khan. so much for joining. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so Our, much. Yes. And Thank you. I know Melissa is there with you too. Welcome okay. both of you to the platform. Thank you so much for Thank joining. You. Just before you came on, uh, on on online, we were discussing the story of um, Rosemary Odinga. I'm going to take mm -hmm. the liberty of flashing this. Uh, this one slide here, just to put everything in, in context here. This is the story of Rosemary Odinga, who lost her eyesight, uh, daughter of the former uh, Kenyan Prime Minister, Raila Odinga. And for about five or six years, she didn't have sight. She went around the world. Nobody could help her. They said, sorry, we don't know how to treat this. And finally, somebody said, come to India and be treated with Ayurveda. Rosemary did. And she got yeah. her eyes back on the right of Rose, on the, uh, Rosemary's left there is the physician, Narayan Nambudri at Sridhariyam in Kerala. And this yeah. is the story, just to put everything in context. And we are so fortunate to have you here with us. Thank you for joining. Thank Give you. Give us a rough idea of what you have sensed uh, <laughs> from your stay in India when you are studying to where you are now. Uh, uh, a member of parliament for the Orange Democratic Movement. Uh, do tell us a little more about what is the mood in Nairobi? What is the mood in Africa? What is the mood in your mind in terms of where you mm. want? Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, I was I started in India many years back. I left India in 1994. I was there for six good years. And uh, I enjoyed staying in India actually. And uh, I enjoyed traveling around and seeing sites and many, many places. Um, and Indians are very, they live a very simple life. They, 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 they are always trying to do something, something new. And uh, the innovation I think has brought them on the global map and has brought them, especially in the medicine, in the medicine field, in the, in the, they have done very well because you will see many, many people tripping to India to go for treatment of one or this or that. We've seen even many of these uh, pharmaceuticals are imported from India. When there was COVID-19, I remember we received vaccines from India. Some of the, India donated uh, some of the vaccines to us in, in Kenya. And uh, the mood here is that uh, we are trying to, uh, to get that to election and we are going to elect a new government because the, the, the current president is retiring and everybody is upbeat and uh, Raila Odinga, the one you mentioned, the father of Rosemary, uh, is likely to be our next president because he's, he's my part leader and is one of the front runners uh, uh, campaigning to be our next president and uh, there the, are the good chances that he will be, he will make it. and. Uh, he has promised one of the things is going to make sure that the revolutionize in Kenya is to turn around our, our health sector uh, to become more vibrant because it, as it is now, we are still lacking behind. We depend on uh, uh, almost everything imported and some of the things that uh, some our hospitals are not well equipped, are not well uh, uh, you know, ready to, to, to take up some, some of the diagnoses like cancer and all that. So I think learning from what I've just heard from the past speaker about Ayurvedic and, uh, and the other new invention of medicine, I think that's a revolution that we need to also to look at. 
uh, in Africa and uh, particularly in Kenya, because we have got so many, a lot of uh, good things about India. We relate very well. We do a lot of things, business and many other things. And uh, for on record, the right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga is a personal friend of the Prime Minister of India, uh, mm -hmm. Rachendra Modi. I think when he went there with his daughter, the story uh, I heard him tell us a story about when he mentioned to Modi, Modi uh, called and, and said, we can uh, have Rosemary treated here. And she was taken in. And we are very impressed when she came back uh, with her sight. So I think I'm very, very impressed and I'm happy to be here. Tim, we are very fortunate to have you again. I repeat what I said, to have you here with us, particularly because you have the India experience. Now, yes. you can see Kenya is a very important part of the Commonwealth of Nations. The 50 million mm -hmm. people of Kenya are very important for the Commonwealth of Nations. And there's already yeah. a lot of, lot of activity in that space. One of the things we would uh, like very much to happen are these mm -hmm. interactions at the education, at the research level, and yes. uh, enabling further action, either at the United Nations or other places, uh, in terms of these traditional medicine, healthcare, as you've heard from Mahesh in Geneva, the emphasis on prevention. These are all strong messages that can come from Ayurveda. We would very much like to see strengthening of interactions in that space. So hopefully, after the elections, when you are there back in parliament, we will come to you asking for guidance on how to take all this forward. That is, that will be critical. Thank you. So, Timothy so we, we, we wish you to win the election and your party come to power. You become the health minister and you host this program for us. May it be as you have played for me. Thank you very much. We hope to win and we will. Thank we'll you make so it. much yeah. uh, for joining us today. If there is a special message you would like to leave with our uh, viewers today, we are streaming live on Facebook uh, across the world. If there's a message you would like to leave with them before you, I know you have a busy day there. If you would like to leave a message. Yeah. Um, I would like uh, our country, especially in Africa, um, in, the in the field of medicine, that we could uh, learn, especially from the Asian countries, especially India, because India relates well with Kenya. We have so many things in common that we can also learn and uh, make our medicine more affordable for our people. That is one of the area that is really uh, disturbing us because anytime we are losing so many people on opportunistic diseases and uh, th things like HIV and AIDS, which now is more manageable, is still a bother to us. And uh, uh, even, even with COVID-19, we still, uh, you know, struggling to recover from, from the ramifications of the COVID-19. But I know uh, with the proper, uh, you know, partner partnership with with countries which are advanced like India and uh, and other uh, countries that are working around the clock uh, to find a more affordable uh, 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 medicine for the people. I've I've visited some of the facilities in the, in some of the can, some countries and I found that. The, 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 the results are amazing. They have gone quite uh, like uh, I went to Poland and I saw somewhere a facility where they're working on how to treat uh, sports people when mm -hmm. they're injured and how they can manage it from the scene. Um, and by the time you arrive at the hospital, they have managed almost almost ninety percent of, of of the injury. So I think that's a, that's where we need to go and. Kenya being a sporting nation, I think we need to learn more about uh, this uh, revolution. And I'm sure with our next parliament and with the next government in power, which is promising much for us, we will be able to uh, put this in legislation and, and uh, forge a partnership with, uh, with advanced countries like uh, the, the India and others. Yeah, thank you. Tim, thank you. You know, the world looks to Kenya for long distance runners. I don't know how you people do it. You seem to keep a storehouse of runners one after <laughs> another. They seem to come from somewhere. So the they come from somewhere in the Rift Valley of Kenya yes, because it's, from the Rift it's a very hilly area. And these guys spend a lot of time running around um, uh, looking after cattle and also going to school long distances and all that. 
And so in the essence, uh, they build themselves very much. The yeah. other, so. other area where we hope we will see more dialogue is just growing medicinal plants. You know, yes, you yes. A wonderful rich area where you can grow. And then all the related skills in terms of how to convert, add value to these medicinal plants mm. and how Thank they you. can produce be produced not only locally for Kenya, but for all of Africa and for the rest of the world. And these are all areas where we can engage. Thank, Thank you once you. again for being with us today, joining us from Kenya. You can see okay. how quickly we connect the world between yes. uh, across continents. Thank okay. you again. Namaste. Asante. Namaste. Ji. Namaste. Harish Ji, we, uh, once again, we thank our um, two special guests who have left us with very, very important messages and very inspiring messages. So thanks, Tim, thanks, Mahesh. And I uh, uh, hand over to uh, Harish Ji to take us on, Harish Ji. Yes, sir. No, yes. sir, you can invite uh, Dr. Praneet. Okay, so there we are. Now we are, we thank our two special guests and yes. we move on to the main session and we have, I'm told we are try. We will try and finish this in 60 minutes. We have completed. Uh, we we spare about 60 minutes. So, the idea, as I said in our presentations here, is to bring to the world the large number of traditional formulations that India harbors. India has something called the dig, uh, digital uh, traditional TKDL traditional knowledge digital library which has over 300,000 formulations uh, related to different health conditions gathered from all the old texts, oldest texts of Ayurveda dating back to more than 3,000 years. And we're very fortunate to have here with us um, our two speakers. Pranaji is joining us from Pune. Pranaji, the floor is yours. Thank you for joining us today. Pranaji Thank you, sir. Is, is a very senior uh, the Ayurveda physician come teacher and uh, the floor is yours Pranaji. We want to learn today, we will learn today about the very important formulation that has uh, many, many benefits and uh, Pranaji will take us to through the formulation. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So uh, Ashwagandha, most of the people might have heard about this herb Ashwagandha but there is a special formulation called as Ashwagandha Rishta that is somewhat peculiar and special. It has got some special uh, benefits also. So let us start with uh, the uh, uh, Ashwagandha Rishta. I will like to share my PPT with you so that uh, all of you get some assistance in understanding the points that I am going to uh, share with you. So this Ashwagandha Rishta, so what is the concept behind making some preparation out of this Ashwagandha? Imagine if you could get a herbal drug with improved therapeutic efficacy than the uh, original raw herb with hundreds of times of extended shelf life. Then that means the expiry uh, date is, is too long. Apart from that, totally by green method, no harmful solvents, no harmful chemicals included, already time tested. You can consider it as a phase four clinical trial already done and uh, approved as a safe thing. That also without any chemical preservatives and additive. So if you are thinking about such kind of uh, preparation of herbal uh, uh, material, the Arishta is the way where you can get the answer. So what is this Arishta? Today we are going to discuss about Arishta made up of Ashwagandha. The name of the her, uh, formulation is Ashwagandha Arishta. So the Arishta, what is this Arishta? Arishta is a self-generated alcohol uh, made up of herbal uh, material. This is a for therapeutic preparation and it is included in traditional Ayurvedic medicine. So many a time people confuse this Arishta with merely a combination of aqueous and alcoholic extract, but it is not like that. It is something more than just a hydroalcoholic extract. So what exactly this thing is? Today, this thing we are going to understand in a very brief manner. 
So the page, whatever you are looking on my screen is the uh, uh, actual ancient uh, 600 years old manuscript where Ayurveda has mentioned in what, uh, what manner this Arishta preparation is to be prepared. So this is the ancient formula written in ancient uh, script. Uh, this is yet another uh, formula, another uh, prescription uh, inscription from some another uh, manuscript uh, giving information about manufacturing of Arishta. This is from some another book. So I have brought to you these two original manuscripts from ancient time. Uh, and now I am going to explain to you in a very simple language, what is this Arishta and how this Ashwagandha Arishta is going to benefit us in a better way. So there are three stages. I will be explaining this to this Arishta process in very simple format to you so that you uh, understand this thing. So there are three, three stages. In first stage, we boil certain herbs, for example, ashwagandha and other herbs with water, very specific proportion to extract those things into water. We boil those herbs into water. We make it into a decoction. We reduce it to a certain extent, for example, to one eighth, and then we filter it and we collect a decoction. In Ayurveda, we call it as a quat or kashaya. We collect this decoction for further manufacturing process. So once we have got this decoction, then we add a certain source of sugar, may it be honey, may it be jaggery, or may it be something else. So we add the source of sugar as per classical indication, as per classical reference to this decoction, and a source of yeast to initiate the fermentation. Okay, so once this fermentation process starts, it runs for around three weeks. Okay, so uh, in this process, uh, what is the benefit of uh, keeping this process for a, a long time, like three weeks? The secondary metabolites available in plants, apart from those secondary metabolites, some new secondary metabolites are formed during this process. Usually, this, this uh, uh, formation of new secondary metabolites occurs into the later stage, or you can say the second stage of fermentation, and it is called as idiophase. And this idiophase is followed by the active growth phase called as trophophase. So this is the reason why we need to keep this uh, formulation for a longer duration, like three weeks. So. As, as this process goes on, this yeast, those yeast eat the plant material, eat the sugar and convert it into simpler form, more easy for our digestion, assimilation and more in the medicinal properties. So once this filtration process is completed, we filter that liquid and then we add uh, additives, those are heat sensitive, those we cannot add into the decoction. We add such heat sensitive additives, for example, aromatic substances, uh, the substances, the herbs with fragrance, essential oils, etc. We add those uh, additives in this last stage and we keep it for another one week. So in this process, around 8 to 12 percent self-generated alcohol is generated in this ashwagandha rishta. And apart from the original phytochemicals, apart from the original medicinal properties of the herbs, this ashwagandha rishta or this arishta preparations bears extraordinary properties, extraordinary metabolites, secondary metabolites, extraordinary synergistic uh, compounds those were never available in the simple, in the mere uh, combination of herbs or in uh, mere extract of herbs. So this is the uh, concept of preparation of Arishta in nutshell. Now let us proceed to the uh, Ashwagandha. So this Ashwagandha, also known as Indian ginseng, is very popular herb. It is very effective on nerves, uh, uh, brain, memory things. Apart from that, it is a very good tonic 
for anabolism and it is in ayurveda a very popular drug for vata sham vata avyadi or diseases of vata are mostly the uh, neurological neuromuscular kind of diseases and this ashwagandha is very good uh, herb for that so major uh, metabolites secondary metabolites in this ashwagandha are alkaloids steroidal lactones saponins and methanolates the roots those uh, are available in the photograph are the ashwagandha roots the usable part of this plant is roots apart from these major secondary metabolites there are around 25 other secondary metabolites being identified in this ashwagandha okay the list is enlisted here for your reference now when we talk about the arishta preparation of ashwagandha that is ashwagandha arishta though the preparation of arishta this kind of herbal preparation is there in tradition since uh, around uh, 6000 years before christ but the particular formulation ashwagandha arishta is uh, by this particular name is mentioned in a classical treaty named as vaishajya ratnapati and the uh, broad classification of components in this ashwagandha arishta is first one the medicinal herbal uh, blend for decoction the second portion is sugars and yeast source for initiation of fermentation and the third portion is additive herbs so let us see which are these herbs so there are 18 herbs enlisted in this blend for the decoction you may be familiar with some of the names like ashwagandha mushli manjishtha haritaki turmeric daru haridra yashti madhu rasna pidari arjuna musta trivrit sariva krishna sariva shweta chandana rakta chandana vacha chitra so for your reference botanical names are also listed here apart from these herbs for decoction there is uh, honey or jaggery as a source of sugar and dhataki the flowers you are seeing in this image are flowers of herb named as dhataki this dhataki works as a source of yeast to start the fermentation apart from being a source of yeast it also adds to the medicinal property of ashwagandha ishta a study uh, suggests that when you uh, prepare the arishta with ready made yeast versus the flowers of dhataki the flavonoid the very good antioxidant secondary metabolites are better generated when you prepare the fermentation with the flowers of dhataki so the additive things are shunti maricha pipali twak ela patra priyanku and nakesha there are nine herbs listed in the list of additives in ashwagandha so here are some photographs for your reference and easy understanding how this uh, ashwagandha arishta is prepared so in the first photograph you are uh, seeing the initial stage when the fermentation is yet going on you can see the froth there the foam is there so that indicates there is still fermentation process is going on in the second photograph this is the stage where new metabolites new secondary metabolites break down of the original phytochemicals is going on so this is the stage when your normal ashwagandha is changing into something else something good the blend of her is uh, becoming more active more uh, assimilable more easy to digest and that blend together is uh, is something better than just a extract of that blend in the third stage you can see when we uh, filter this thing and the arishta ashwagandha arishta which is into the final stage of uh, preparation sediments uh, accumulate at the bottom and you can see the medicated fluid medicated liquid called as ashwagandha arishta floating on the Uh, top this is this all brown portion is actually the ashwagandha arishta now 
what are the key benefits of this traditional arista process of fermentation over modern hydro alcoholic extraction okay so in solvent extraction alcohol and water soluble party chemicals from herbs are extracted whereas in asaba along with the water and alcohol soluble phytochemicals it produces additional functional metabolites giving higher total phenolic content and total flavonoid content etc in your medicine second point in solvent extraction no modification in the characteristic of original herb is possible whereas when you do it with the traditional process of um, uh, arista preparation or asava preparation fermentation changes the herbal phytochemical structure breaks it into simpler and more bioavailable the third point with solvent extraction is that it only a uh, concentration of available phytochemicals can be achieved can be increased fragmentation of extracts uh, uh, when we fragment the extract in extraction process solvent extraction process mostly the phytochemicals becomes unstable and it is very difficult to club it with various uh, other drugs other medicines other herbs or it is also difficult to make it stable and make it last for long whereas in arista preparation it is a stable form of medicine and this fermentation uh, produces many antioxidant uh, uh, phytochemicals that protects that medicine that protects the uh, drug from getting deteriorated and also the alcohol produced in this it also improves the shelf life so uh, in this way the shelf life the stability the efficacy is improved in traditional ayurvedic processes so in that shell what are the benefits of this arista procedure uh, the synergistic activity of herbal blend it is improved and therapeutic efficacy is also improved shelf life due to 8 to 12% cell generated alcohol and antioxidant compounds generated it is it is a longer shelf life it is actually unlimited shelf life but for uh, uh, india as per drug act it is it is um, declared to be 10 years but actually as per traditional ayurveda it is a unlimited shelf life medicine more potent than decoction just just making a alcoholic uh, extract or just making a water extract no it is more potent than the decoction because new secondary metabolites are formed due to alcohol and pre digested form it is easy to penetrate inside your blood stream easy for assimilation it gives quick and a more precise therapeutic effects this ashwagandha arista this kind of uh, doses form of ashwagandha root is useful in brain and nerve diseases neuromuscular disorders it palliates vata problems it palliates anxiety improves physical exercise tolerance capacity it prevents damage of muscles whoever goes for exercises it is also good as anabolic tonic for growing kids and aging people also it is used as a very good aphrodisiac for men so in a nutshell these were the benefits of this ashwagandha arista for your reference the, the references are mentioned here and uh, uh, your questions your queries are very much welcome thank you thank you pranish ji uh, thank you very much for taking us through all those wonderful details including uh, time series on what happens during the fermentation process what you have shown there is very very important thank you very much for being here with us today now i have a question uh, while we wait for a few comments that might come in from our viewers a question is um, about the textbook that you mentioned by shaji ratnavali and the number we mentioned about the traditional uh, digital knowledge library and about the large number of formulations that are there some people say that if you compare the recipes that are given here they vary from textbook to textbook there is a small variation is there something that you would like to tell our viewers about this uh, yes since these are traditional medicines 
uh, if if you are living in a south part of india versus you are living in the north part of india the uh, availability of herbs in their natural habitat is obviously a little different so when you are talking about some herb in the north of part of a different species may be there in south of india a different species may be there but it is already uh, verified that whenever you are taking some different species or whenever you are taking a different herb as a replacement it is it is confirmed it is assured that the as a as a blend as a blend the properties the characteristics and health benefit of that particular formulation are not altered are not changed and whenever you are adding some different herb that may change the properties of uh, that uh, formulation we usually nomenclature them with a new name and not the same name so if there are various formulations available in various books there is a, usually a minor difference like 10 to 20% uh, but the the indications the properties uh, are usually unchanged because in the blend there are multiple herbs so so if one is not available the other are there to uh, take care of the uh, efficacy so it is usually harmless and acceptable rajee thank you so much for uh, sharing all this uh, uh, all the details uh, and thank you for introducing us to this formulation please stay with us there are more, more questions that will come on as we progress Sir, i have on. one question oh harish ji please yes uh, Dr. Paniji, sometimes mm -hmm. during manufacturing, this ashwagandha rich turns very sour. It turns, uh, 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 turns very sour. How it can be prevented uh, turning into acetic acid during manufacturing? Uh, uh, it is a very, very uh, tricky question actually, but it actually happens into the manufacturing facility. The fermentation, proper fermentation, there are two, three prerequisites like the temperature. An optimum temperature should be there. If temperature is down, it, if it is a cold season or facility is not well insulated, it may, uh, it may go into acidic fermentation, acidic acid fermentation instead of alcoholic fermentation. So when instead of alcoholic fermentation, it goes into acidic fermentation, it will produce acid and not alcohol and your, your product becomes soap. So first precaution is the good uh, uh, temperature and uniform temperature throughout day and night. This is the first requisite. Second requisite is that whatever vessel you are using, it should be fresh or properly clean. If it contains a traces of previously uh, manufactured uh, product or aso or arista, it may it may carry uh, yeast or microbes from the previous fermentation and it will make this new freshly prepared arista also sour. And third thing that if you are not putting in sufficient quantity of uh, sugar or source of sugar like jaggery, honey, etc. for the alcoholic preparation, this preparation may turn sour due to acetic acid fermentation. So if you take care of these three uh, things, your fermentation will never go wrong and it will produce the desired flavor, desired fragrance, desired quantity of alcohol. And uh, uh, there is a, a practice where if the fermentation turns sour, some people add soda by carb to it to neutralize the acid and uh, bring it back to the normal pH. But I personally, uh, would not encourage this kind of practice encourage. because it is going to uh, change the properties of medicine. So taking adequate care when you start the preparation is the only and best way to carry out the product. Sir, Dr. Pranit, I just have a quick question. The yes, jars which you showed with the red uh, cap, are they plastic jars or were they glass bottles? Like There are glass bottles, madam. You usually no, prefer glass bottles. Glass, glass bottle or wooden uh, drums. 
and one more quick question is uh, as this is hydroalcoholic base uh, preparation so can it be given to hyperacidity amla pitta what we call people who suffer from amla pitta will it be advisable for them for the people those do not have active gastric ulcers we can use it because mm -hmm. uh, the if there are gastric ulcer the percentage of alcohol into it will directly uh, irritate to the uh, ulcers mm -hmm. okay so if you want to give it for a medicinal purpose uh, to a person who is having actually gastric ulcer but it is very necessary for you to give this medicine to somebody there is a very simple way uh, to uh, dose this medicine just uh, uh, heat it up for a uh, 10 minutes so that the excess alcohol is evaporated or mm -hmm. secondly dilute it into sufficient quantity of water so that the alcohol percentage uh, drops down to such a level that it it does not hurt to a open okay. wound or ulcer as well so Good. actually you, you can dose it sir Thank last you. question last question yeah. is there role of air control during manufacturing of asa varista air uh, pardon sir air is control there, yes because in ayurveda text there is a written nirvat sthan so we can we should prevent oxygen during manufacturing so what do you think does it help in converting alcohol into uh, acetic acid uh, if we control air what is your opinion obviously obviously the the jar which i showed you it was having a wall uh, above it that is unidirectional wall when when the uh, fermentation is uh, taking place carbon dioxide is generated so that wall water lock only permits the generated carbon dioxide to escape out but it does not allow external air to go in so that is the concept of sealing it but in case of nirvata rather than being in absence of oxygen the nirvata uh mainly refers to absence of flowing wind means it will not cool down the place it should be properly sealed uh, the temperature should be constant and there should be not much movement of air through and fro through that thing uh, and regarding the entry of oxygen yes it is already the prerequisite you should not be uh, allowing external air because not only the oxygen but also the external microbes Uh, external impurities from the environment that may also turn your uh, product into something else if unwanted bacteria unwanted uh, fungus unwanted something is going in it may it may take your fermentation to the wrong direction so yes as you suggested in absence of oxygen yes it is to be done in absence of oxygen proper care proper wall unidirectional unidirectional water seals should uh, must be applied and another thing it should be away from uh, flowing wind so that the temperature whatever is generated inside is 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 constant throughout day and night and all seasons thank you sir thank you thank you over to dr madan ji thank you, you uh, hari ji thank you uh, uh, very much again for questions that uh, will help our audience to also learn a little more about what we are what what we are discussing fermentation is a very complex process and many many uh, chemical changes take place and one of the most exciting thing for those in listening to us about um, fermentation and the benefits or what happens during fermentation a simple example is racemic changes you know where the stereo isomeric forms of certain chemicals are switched around and uh, this is something that can happen only uh, during fermentation and some of these stereoisomers are very important they are more active in, um, in one or two uh, the other form and the microbes do it very effectively it is still a mystery as our uh, mahesh ji our special guest mentioned these are all the questions that come in that area of modernizing the traditional uh, systems as of our systems the fermented preparations are very uh, a difficult part of uh, the form uh, the formulation so by whether there's a lot of help that can come from uh, the modern fermentation technology i think and we can learn a lot so we move on to our uh, next speaker uh, a kaya chikitsa expert who is going to address the question of how 
these formulations are meant to be treated. Dr. Gurundath Amin, Namaskar ji, thank you for joining us today. Now, before you start, uh, Gurundath, I just want to share with people what is written, a little more about what is written in the back there. We can see part of it, Madhav Bhag is a very established institution in India, and they are one of the leading institutions who approach the whole area of preventive cardiology, if I remember correctly. They also have a lot of clinical experience. So we welcome uh, uh, Guru to our platform. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I guess I'm very well audible. Yes, we can hear you loud and clearly. The floor is okay. yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, organizers, for giving, uh, giving me this opportunity. So, uh, if you will go through the basic content of Ashwagandha Rishta, you will find that it contains Ashwagandha Rishta Musali, Manjishta, Haritaki, Haridra, Daru Haridra, Yashtimadur, Asana, Vidari Kanda, Rajantwak, Mustan, Trivrutta. Now, this whole content is uh, very much interesting. Why interesting? Because all these contents are basically anabolic in nature. What do you mean by anabolic? They are going to help your body to get nourished. And this is the reason why this Ashwagandha Rishta is specially mentioned in Murcha, Apasmuthi, Shosham, Unmadam, Apidarunam, Karsham, Arsham, Simandatva, Magne, Vata, Paman, Gadan. So in a Murcha Rogadika, they have mentioned this Ashwagandha Rishta. And over there, we need to understand that this product, Ashwagandha Rishta, is going to help you in anabolism. So all those diseases where the catabolism is predominant, you need to think about Ashwagandha Rishta. And if you will think about Ashwagandha Rishta in those diseases, which are Langaniya, so over there, you will come across a problem. So please understand that in a, those diseases we, we, where, where the langan is essential, the ashwagandha is not at all indicated. So myself, Dr. Guru Dutta, I mean, as uh, sir has introduced me, I belong to a Madhobag, which, uh, which is dealing with the cardi non-invasive cardiac medicine. That means we are treating a heart patients, diabetes, blood pressure without any operative. And over here, in a Madhobag, we have reversed more than 30,000 diabetic patients. So why I'm putting this information in front of you? Because the Ashwagandha Rishta, about which I'm going to talk, I will be talking with context of a diabetes because the major majority of patients, what we are seeing, they are diabetic. And this is the reason why I will be talking about Ashwagandha Rishta with a special reference to the diabetes. Now, let me move ahead and uh, consider all these uh, uh, indications or the uses of Ashwagandha Rishta in a one by one manner. When we talk about a murcha, I will consider it as an abnormal glucose homeostasis, which is causing a hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. So there are the diabetics who are coming up uh, with the episodes of hypoglycemia as well as a hyperglycemia. The sugar levels are very much fluctuating. Apasma, I haven't used this medicine for apasma. Shosha, catabolic conditions of diabetic. So those diabetic who are falling in the category of a Lada or the Modi, they are having a problem associated with the catabolism. They are uh, they get the diabetes at the age of the 40 or 45, and then immediately they start losing their weight. So that is a, uh, that is a particular case where the patient is going to lose the weight. Daruna Unmada. Now, Daruna Unmada, I can say that the psychological conditions where a diabetic patients will be coming to you with number of a psychological disturbances because of the hormonal imbalances. So, so because the diabetes is associated with the dopamine deficiency and there are a number of disturbances in hormonal axis right from insulin glucagon to leptin. So everywhere there is an imbalance and that is going to cause number of psychological complaints over there. We have used it. Karsha, low BMI diabetic patient. Krusha Pramehi, Arsha, Agnivikruti, Mandagni, yes, Agnivikruti, and Vatavika, Neuropathy. So over there, we have uh, used this medicine. And uh, if you will ask me, can you level, uh, can you give me a straightforward indication? Yes, these are the indications. Low BMI diabetic patients, diabetes with a fasting hyperglycemia. Why fasting hyperglycemia? Because whenever you have a fasting hyperglycemia, there is a problem with the sympathetic overactivation. Because your sympathetic nervous system is asking your liver to produce a more and more glucose. And that is what is going to cause a fasting hyperglycemia. Over there, the Ashwagandha Rishta works very well. Then comes the sarcopenia. If the patient is having a muscle loss, he is having a weakness in the muscles, which is a common presentation in a diabetic patient, this drug is going to work very well. Diabetes with the hormonal imbalance, as I said, oxytocin, dopamine, and the serotonin, all those happy hormones will be disturbed. Along with that, the leptin resistance, insulin resistance, and multiple hormonal imbalances are there. Over there, this drug is going to work well. Diabetes with the neuropathy. 
that is a main problem because 80% uh, diabetic patient they will be coming to you with the neuropathy and over there this drug is going to work well erectile dysfunction one more important uh, problem which will be faced by the 70% diabetic patient this drug is going to work over there diabetes with the insomnia again the major problem with the diabetic patient because of the frequent uh, urination they are going to face these problems and ashwagandha arista works over there very well now if you will see to the major ingredient i am talking about a major ingredient so it contains a haridra all of us are aware about the dhatri nisha yog so haridra and the daru haridra which are going to work very well in insulin resistance it is there now if i am talking about a low bmi diabetic i need to take care of the two things first is a insulin resistance along with that i need to take care of the bruhana so if you see to the composition of ashwagandha arista it contains haridra daru haridra vacha now haridra and daru haridra going to take care of the insulin resistance vacha apasmara kapona mada bhuta jantva nilanhare so this is going to take care of the kapaja vikruti now see to the con configuration or the composition of this ashwagandha arista it contains vacha yashti madhu along with that it contains haritaki which is going to do the job of uh, anulomana along with that trivrutta again the virejandravya then manjishtha now manjishtha is going to work on the uh, On, on multiple levels, already the researchers are there, which are saying that the uh, rubia cordifolia are going to work on the endothelial dysfunction. It is antioxidant, going to take care of the ischemia-induced free radical generations. Also, it is going to work like a diuretic, so it can be used in the CHF, anti-stress. All of us are aware it is going to reduce down the stress levels. Also, it is going to reduce down the platelet aggregation. See to the number of effects what we can see of a uh, you know a, a rubia cordifolia on the blood characteristics. Rubia cordifolia exhibits the sympatholytic. Again, it is going to help you to reduce down the catabolic status. So anything which is going to reduce down the, the sympathetic tone that is going to reduce down the catabolism. And over here, the ashwagandha arista helps. Arjuna. Now look. Initially, we had uh, uh, we had a vacha, yeshti badu. We had a, a trivrutta. Then we have uh, uh, haritaki. Now we have Arjuna. Over there, the Arjuna. Kuku bo shitalo rudyak chataksha vishasa chal medo me am rana nandi tu varak kapitar. Now over here the process of anabolism start. Now I have isolated uh, two components, uh, two major components. One is a catabolic or the pachan component, and now I am talking about the components which are going to help me for the anabolism. So this is Arjuna, which is going to help me in the diabetic as well as the heart disease. So generally, when we talk about Arjuna, we we think that it is majorly uh, cardiac disease, or it can be used in a majorly cardiac diseases. But if you see to the shloka of Arjuna, medo meha pranan handi tu parak kapitar. So it is going to work in the prameha very well. Well, it should be used in a pramehi patient, specifically in those patients who are having a low BMI. Just understand, it is a kashaya rasatma. So, if it is a kashaya rasatma, it is going. It, it is having more amount of a prithvi mahabud in it. So, prithvi and akash is a combination of kashaya mahabud. So, Arjuna is going to help me to improve the process of anabolism, and this is how the Arjuna is there and going to help me in a low BMI diabetic. Vidari kanda again a one more bruhana dravya. Look, bruhan is indicated in a low diabetic patient, low BMI uh, patients. स्थूल प्रमेह बलवान अश्वगंधारिष्ट <laughs> now if you will see to the look the interesting part over here is rasa rasa is a tikta kashaya and madhura okay the virya is a ushna vipaka is a katu guna is a snigdha and a lagu so if you will see to the ashwagandha it is a combination of all the perfect suit for a low bmi diabetic krusha prame for the krusha prame this is the best drug which is going to take care of uh, ruhan as well as which is not going to increase the kapha dhatu and going to increase the pathophysiology of the disease so this is a reason why ashwagandha arista is majorly used please understand it well that the ashwagandha arista is also inotropic drug so ashwagandha is a inotropic going to increase the force of contraction of your heart so if the patient is coming to you with the diabetes and the heart failure or the symptoms of the breathlessness the ashwagandha is the best drug over there which is going to give you increment in the you know cardiac output or ejection fraction as well as it is going to reduce down the uh, blood sugars also 
Also, as I as I said, uh, there are a number of outputs. Uh, reduces the stress, improves the sleep quality, nervine tonic. Someone has asked in a chat box. I, I was able to see he was talking about the quadriquinus syndrome. And over there, definitely this is a nervine tonic. But I will say this is not the principal drug in, to be used over there in that particular case. I am referring to the question which I was able to see in the chat box. So over there, the ashwagandha arishna is the principal drug. Or to be, you know, advised. There are a number of different drugs which need to be advised. Also, there uh, we need to take care of the uh, agni kosta, and along with that, the ashwagandha arista can be used as a nervine tonic. It is going to reduce down the anxiety. Definitely, it is going to reduce down the fasting blood sugar levels. It is going to reduce down the adrenaline levels, and uh, catabolism can be arrested well with this. Improves the strength. Definitely, in a sarcopenia condition, when the diabetic patient, they are going to lose the muscle mass. They are going to specifically lose the shoulder muscles. They are going to reduce down. Uh, you will be finding the chest muscle. Muscles will be reduced, back muscles, or glute muscles, or the calf muscles, thigh muscles, everywhere you will find there is a sarcopenia. The muscle mass will reduce down. Also, the strength in the muscles or the hand grip strength or hand grip strength, there is a test called hand grip strength test. So that test score will also reduce. So that is also observed in these uh, diabetic patients, low BMI. Over there, this Ashwagandha Arishta is going to work very well. Heart muscles, as I said, it is a positive inotropic. It is going to improve the force of contraction. It helps in a fatigue, uterine tonic, and antioxidant. So take two message from my side is this. A low BMI diabetic patient, use it uh, without any hesitation. Don't think about the sugars in that uh, Ashwagandha Arishta. Many of you might be having a fear about the Ashwagandha Arishta that it contains a sugar. But forget about it. It contains a calories. It's not a sugar problem. It's a calories. So out of, uh, if you will take a 40 ml of dose in a day, 20 ml and 20 ml uh, two times in a day after food, if you will take this dose, then in a 40 ml of Ashwagandha Arishta, only four grams of actual alcohol is going to get entered in your body. And that four grams of alcohol is not more than the 28 calories. So it is just a 28 calories what you're consuming after uh, with taking Ashwagandha Arishta for the diabetic patient. So though it is a sweet, though it contains uh, calories, I will strongly recommend for those patients who are low BMI diabetic. Again, I'm talking about it. If the patient is suffering with any sort of anabolic diseases. So in anabolic diseases, this drug is going to cause trouble. Do not give this drug in a condition where the anabolism is predominant. Over there, if the Langhaniya disease is there, then Ashwagandha Arishta is contraindicated. If Bruhaniya disease is there, then definitely Ashwagandha Arishta has to be used. And I will uh, end my session over here. Uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Gurudev. You have gone at express speed, but uh, for those who already know a little bit about Ayurveda, they have enjoyed this very much. For those who are curious, you have used a lot of phrases here. Uh, murcha <laughs> is one phrase that you have used, and you have used many other phrases that will excite those who want to come into Ayurveda. Now, I have a question, if I may have. Uh, before we invite uh, others who are attending us today. Now, your language, the, the way you have presented this shows the mastery of how you can bring these two disciplines together, you know, how you can bring Ayurvedic systems and modern medicine. And you are very fortunate to be in a place which actually does this very effectively. For those, I put this in the chat, chat box, Madhubag, I would urge everybody to look at what is the work that goes on in Madhubag. Now, if you were to take a formulation like this, and if you had an opportunity to collaborate with a research team or a clinical team here in, the, in Canada or in the UK, how confident are you that you will be able to bring about a very vibrant collaboration? Yes, definitely. Because at the end of the day, look, uh, I, would, I would like to put some light on the basic concepts of uh, diabetes and what the Ayurveda is saying about it. Uh, in Ayurvedic context, they have said that the stula prabehi balavana eka kurushasata eka paridru balasya. Now, if you see to this, this shloka, you will realize that they have already categorized the diabetes into two different categories. A diabetes which is there with the obese and diabetes which is there with the lean. Now you need to have a different strategy while dealing with the obese diabetic and patient with the low BMI diabetic. They have already explained. But if you will see to the present practices of modern medicine, there are just oral hypoglycemic agents. If you have a high sugar level, just continue taking these medicines. Either you take uh, uh, all those medicines. I'm not going to talk about all those medicines. But that strategy is not taking care the difference between the two diabetic patients. 
so if we come up with the concepts if we keep on analyzing the data so please uh, understand it it's not the my knowledge uh, i'm working in madhobak since last 15 uh, odd years and in those 15 years we have generated a huge data we have committed so many mistakes and after those mistakes we concluded that there are different categories of diabetic you can't treat a stula prameya with a krusha prameya approach so that is what i want to say that we can definitely come ahead and we can you know uh, explore the basic concepts which are mentioned in ayurveda and we will try to bring it uh, you know in a clinical practices so that the patients can get actual benefit of it there are number of uh, factors which are you know controversial when we talk about uh, sattu all of us are aware that the sattu uh, when we talk about a sattu which is which is a uh, uh, which is generally advised in ayurvedic diet if we when we have analyzed the nutritional composition of sattu we have realized that it contains a huge amount of carbohydrate now if you will go with the analysis analytical methods of uh, modern nutritions how much carbohydrate how much fiber how much protein it contains then you will eliminate that sattu you will say that it is a high carb content but if you will check out the glycemic response of that sattu then you will realize it is fantastic medicine which is going to give a very least glycemic response though it contains a good amount of carbohydrate the glycemic response is less what i'm trying to tell you over here sir that there are so many concepts which you need to revisit and uh, many concepts or many beliefs which are there in the modern medicines they need to be you know again a cross check and we need to come up with something which can actually help the society in a better way thank you thank you gurudev you know the point you made about low bmi diabetes versus high bmi it is very very important and maybe that itself can become a whole new project a whole new perhaps uh, uh, harish ji might have something to say i don't know if you are aware of the what canada india forum are doing in toronto they have something called the university health network which takes yes, care of 6000 hospitals uh, 6000 beds and there is an immense opportunity for interaction together with our friends in kenya together with our friends in other parts of the world we could all come together to make extremely vibrant projects together with uh, mother bug sure, 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 sure. yes, sir harish ji harish ji is admiring your uh, presentation and he's mesmerized here yeah yeah, yeah yeah it was an amazing presentation and uh, dr gurudev ji you are genius now mm -hmm. i have a question i have a question you yes, said sir. it is a, a ashwagandha rest is a primarily anabolic medicine anabolic drug so can it be used by the sports people athletes will yes, they have any well. trouble in dope test a uh, dope test uh, i i i i doubt over there i i i think it won't be uh, you know getting uh, detect detected because these are the medicines which will get metabolized immediately as this is a uh, arishta kalpana it won't be there in a blood for a longer duration it will get metabolized immediately and if you will see to the overall ashwagandha it is definitely a positive inotropic but that uh, you know in a dope test the ashwagandha is getting detected i i i am not very much clear about it but definitely i will search on it and will come back to you yeah 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 because yeah. there is a vast scope for this okay if, if it is good. so potent uh, anabolic drug and uh, you have lot of experience with the anabolic effect of this medicine then i think there is a vast scope in the sports industry a lot of people can right, use right it. very true thank you sir thank you very right. much uh, dr dr gurudath can you give the english name for sattu to the audience please ah oh. uh, sattu which is a uh, chana chana flour what do you call it as a uh, horse gram chana. flour oh. chana sattu, is uh, so Basin, basin. What do you say? Gram, osgram, osgram flour. Osgram, jolly cost. Okay. Okay. You can see okay. the audience. Thank you, Alivji. Thank, thank you. you. I wanted, I want to see if I can drag Satish Ji into our discussion a little bit because Satish Ji is the our anchor there in Toronto and bringing us all together. And he connects with the, he catalyzes this activity with the university. Uh, uh, university health network satish ji uh, what has come through from uh, 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 gurudev's presentation yeah, I, I, i think it was one of the very very amazing uh, presentation i was thoroughly thoroughly enjoying it and as you rightly said it diabetes uh, has been one of the major issue uh, actually i think not only our south asian population facing here uh, but also you know all 
a mainstream also we see a lot of uh, issues uh, on, on pertaining to that and i think the model which you are adopting it, it's a very uh, kind of a bringing into the modern context that how we can use our technology today's date with the various ancient principle of ayurveda and kind of a, a bringing to the modern context where we always talk about uh, you know of course evidence based and all uh, kind of a what processes we are going through uh, i have learned today that you have been running almost over 200 plus clinics if if i'm uh, correct and is there any um, uh, like uh, way of finding out that how you are collecting that research and how you are using that uh, uh, you know database whether in terms of uh, uh, treating various uh, chronic diseases you mentioned about the heart disease diabetes and all these uh, you know formulations how that data is being uh, collected and if that can be shared and we would love love to have a conversation you know offline along with the uhn uh, with yourself and see how we can run some kind of a pilot project on on this front uh, along with uh, dr harish sharma thank you Sure, sir. Sure. So right now, uh, should I speak on it about the data because it is something uh, which we have generated after uh, you know extensive work for 15 years because that data collection itself is a very difficult task. Uh, I can say with the you know uh, great happiness that we maintain the data of our patients for three three years, and we maintain there. We have developed one app. which is going to you know uh, collect all the detail informations in terms of a vitals like a heart rate blood pressure uh, weight blood sugar so hbavc lipid profile and doctors are going to communicate with the patients through that app and in this way we are going to monitor their blood sugar levels through that app only our doctors are going to help the patients to reduce down their medicines so through the app only the uh, signal is generated or the uh, you know in your uh, the current or i can say the you know doctor can take a call on a drug tapering that now the sugar is falling by 20% you can taper down this medicine we have developed a drug tapering protocol based on that drug tapering protocol which drug from the oral, oral hypoglycemic agents group has to be tapered that is defined and that signal will be given to the doctor doctor will send a message to the patient and patient will follow those ideas and based on that all the oral hypoglycemic agents will be tapered down so just understand it that we know the importance of uh, data monitoring because when we are asking the patient to stop allopathic medicines there are a number of the consequences which can be faced for example if i am asking my patient to stop the agl2 inhibitors and tomorrow morning if the patient sugar goes to the 400 then it would be a great trouble for the patient the patient will go to the allopath and then the you know the all the fight will start the doctor will say why you have stopped the medicine over there we know the importance of monitoring we ask the patient to keep on monitoring the blood sugar levels we have came up with a concept called self monitoring of blood glucose where we ask the patient to monitor their blood sugars on every sunday and the wednesday so these are the two days in a week where they are supposed to monitor their fasting blood sugars and the postprandial blood sugars and send it to the doctor through the app so this is how we generate the data and we maintain the data for about 3 years so app system all those things are there with us definitely we will be happy to share all those details with you so that we can take it to the next level thank you ji thank you okay, thank we, we have there is an I, i invite all our speakers just to use the raise hand option of the zoom on the bottom of the zoom uh, screen if they have any questions we are very fortunate to have here with us with uh, parul joshi ji who is joining from gandhinagar and parul ji is a uh, one of our very respected senior teachers by the superintendent of the hospital there uh, in in gandhinagar and parul ji makes a comment here that you can actually have a, a alternate formulation a alternate formulation which is uh, arishta kalpana also that she says arishta kalpana also relieves indigestion so i don't know if parul ji is able to join us just to clarify this question uh but in the while we see if we can get parul ji to join us i want to see if there is some if there is some comment from uh, pranish ji pranish ji namaskar we are we are uh, using the namaskar. best of our time and as a, we will stay online till satish ji permits us and uh, madan ji there are some question answer also in the in the uh, in the box that's, if that's, maybe we can right. address some of those questions as well i also see tim timothy g has a question 
I will come to the questions on the chat, the chat box. I'm just following. Tim, Tim, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, Melissa, hello. The question. Melissa, this is Melissa. Yes, uh, I, I'm just sorry, and uh, I, I, I must appreciate for your understanding that we have to come in and out because of what we are doing on this end for the election. Uh, Purposes, thank, you, eh? thank you for understanding. So what I wanted to just inquire from the team, are we able to get uh, this information on email? Oh, and, 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 and how you will want uh, moving forward, how you will want the honorable member of parliament probably to participate moving now, forward. Now, and, Melissa, I'm going to take the liberty of answering this question. Uh, yes. This is, you will get uh, further input from other members of our group. But uh, the first one, please stay with us by email. The email yes. is in the chat box. I'll put at least mine, and it's very easy to connect with the with the group, number one. So if there are any questions you have, yes. then you can reach us by email. Number two, Thank you very much. how would we want uh, the Honorable Timothy to help us? Uh, yes, I think yes. this is open for a wider question, but from our side, from what from the presentations today, what you have seen, especially the team, uh, the Mother Bug team, our second presentation, yes. it would be very valuable to start a dialogue as quickly as possible to see mm -hmm. particularly the diabetes, you know, preventive cardiology or other yes. health aspects in Kenya, just to yes. baseline, just to get an idea of what is it that uh, people in Kenya would like uh, to learn from uh, Ayurveda or what are the common conditions? Is it being mapped? Do you have a database or is the health service uh, providing, uh, collecting some data already on conditions? And just to open a dialogue. Fantastic. That would, that would, be, the, that would be an amazing outcome if we can, we can bring that about, bring about just that open dialogue Fantastic, thank you, thank you. And, and then you already, as we said earlier, you already have the story of Rosemary Odinga and the benefits yes. we've had. If we can start to bring those dialogues together, as I said earlier, our the High Commissioner uh, of India in Nairobi will be a great contact point. And then we should great, be great. everything forward easily. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, Melissa. For that, and uh, I, I request uh, that you allow me to leave because we have to plan for tomorrow. I know you have a busy day there. Wish you, <laughs> wish the team, wish Timothy the very best for the election outcomes. I know he's been in parliament for a long time and he's going to continue to be there. So thank all you. Best, all the very best for the 9th of August. Thank you and best wishes to uh, the entire team. Thank you, Melissa. Bye All bye. right. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. I'd, I'd, the questions, the, the, uh, as Satish said, there are some questions here in the chat box and um, in our question answers. And one of the questions comes from uh, Vinod Vyas. Vin I don't know if Vinodji is able to access the microphone. Vinodji, Namaskar. No, um, uh, not able to come to the microphone. We know G's question to our two uh, uh, experts here. Ashwagandha Arishta, will it not work for people with high BMI? So this is a very important question. Ideally, there should there should be a, you know, instead of Ashwagandha Arishta, you should use something which uh, won't be increasing the weight, which will not cause a, you know, a hyper anabolism. So already you have a high BMI, that means the anabolic status. Kapha Bruddhi is there. So the disease is definitely Langanea. So as I said, the Charakha is already defined. Whenever you're treating the patient, just see to it whether it is a Langanea or a Brohanea. If it is a Langanea, then I will suggest no, not to use Ashwagandha Arishta. There are a number of different alternatives available to take care of the different uh, you know, symptoms or the diseases. So that has to be used instead of the Ashwagandha Arishta in the case of a high BMI. Listening to our two scholars today, uh, uh, Pranaji and Gurudev, and the speed at which they are working through and dissecting these problems, I hope our listeners will get a feel for how these specialists think and work, not only in terms of formulations, 
but also in how they appreciate these health conditions and how they help uh, engage with these problems, how they see the conditions in different patients and how they personalize the treatment. So uh, I can see Praniji is, has, Praniji Namaskar. Namaskar, sir. So regarding this question, particular question, whether an obese patient can consume ashwagandha or not, I have a something to add to the uh, statement of uh, Dr. Gurudatta. If that obese person is going to gym to reduce his weight, he wants to burn out the fat and he wants to build up the muscles. For that person going to gym or going for physical exercise, ashwagandha rishta will help for him because Ashwagandha, yes, it is anabolic, but it in this particular case, when he is working on his muscles, it will help him uh, to build up his muscles and at the same time burn out his fats. Ashwagandha also helps uh, a gym going person to heal his muscles injury uh, quickly. And also it provides more exercise tolerance capacity to the muscles. So if a obese patient going for a gym, to reduce his weight, the ashwagandha rishta in this particular way under the guidance of physician will definitely help him build up his muscles, build up his muscular strength and burn out the uh, fat uh, in the same time. 100% agree with the Pranit sir. Guru, Guru Daji, Pranaji, another question that's coming up for a person who is, as far as they know, has average physiology, there are no health issues, is ashwagandha rishta helpful? That is what I said, that definitely as a pranitsar has a very well elaborated that point, that uh, you are taking some sort of a nutrition. Generally, uh, in a healthy uh, healthy individuals, they are habituated to, to take something which is, in a, which is going to provide them a nutrition. So whether that nutrition is essential, whether you have that particular agni to digest that nutrition, that point is very much essential, very much important. If you are obese or a normal weight and you're not doing any sort of, a, you know, physical exercises and just taking ashwagandha rishta for the sake of, a, uh, you know, well-being, then I think it would be a right choice. There are a number of better choices available instead of ashwagandha rishta. That's what my point over there is. Rudraji, second question. We have a question from Vaidya Rajan Patankarji in Mumbai. Perhaps you can see the question. This is about, could you explain the dosage of these things? Because right. that's okay. So I guess yeah. uh, Dr. Rajan Patankar is from uh, uh, Ayurveda He's uh, right. he's, my, he's my teacher. So I, I, I first of all, you know, uh, give a salute to him because he has taught us so many things. So Rajan, sir, uh, generally we are using uh, 20 ml, 20 ml. That's what the dose is. But in, in case with the, you know, some sort of a tolerance issues. So generally, every person won't be tolerating this doses 20 ml and 20 ml. Few patients will come to come with the problem that no, it's not getting tolerated. There are some sort of a, you know problems associated with the acidity. So over there, we can cut it down from 20 ml. We come down to 10 ml. So that is what the dose adjustment we are doing based on the patient's uh, compliance or the patient's tolerance. But uh, with respect to the, the the disease conditions, no, we haven't tested the uh, effect of the different uh, you know for doses on the different diseases. So that I, I'm I'm not clear about that uh, particular question of yours. Gurudat and uh, uh, Pranji want to thank both of you for being with us today. Number one, I want to thank our special guests for guiding us, particularly Mahesh Ji, who told us about the three essential needs, which is modernizing the traditional without losing the spirit of the traditional. Preventive health, a very important area, and uh, the dis to, to distinguish between health and health care. And the third point is emerging pandemics. And he mentioned about antimicrobial resistance. We won't touch on those, the last one, but uh, those were messages. And from our special guests from Kenya, once again, thanks to Melissa, and uh, uh, Honorable Timothy for joining us today, despite the busy schedule they have. The outcome I can see is an opportunity to collaborate a little more actively with uh, Kenya and the rest of Africa. Madhanji, I think uh, Shriman Narendran wants to say something. Oh, sorry. Do you have any comments? No, uh, no this is a very, this is a very, Fascinating discussion. Namaskar. This is a very fascinating discussion. 
I think it's very profound and the detailing and uh, re really hats off to Dr. Praneet and uh, Dr. Gurudath. Uh, it's a very high intense uh, discussion, very relevant. I think these are the kind of initiatives and innovations which, which will catapult this discussion at a global level. And I'm also, also very happy that uh, uh, the Kenyan High Office wanted to also uh, participate and engage. Uh, I think if we create a structure and a format to really take this global, uh, I was suggesting Dr. Harish that uh, we'll bring well-meaning people into this satsanga. Uh, I have a guest from another African country and Norway for next week. And uh, I already got a request from Israel and uh, uh, you know Sweden for the following week. So if we get some movers and shakers from various geographies and uh, we really make this into a global canvas, um, that's what I think we can do from the go-to-market point of view. And I think uh, between uh, these people here, we have put together one of the best technical talents in terms of research, R&D and formulation. I think it's a great combination, a wonderful format. I really wish to see this grow into a, a, a totally a global initiative very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Narendri, thank you so much. Thank okay. you for being here with us and listening to the energy in our discussions. Thank you so much. Now, we are out of time. I want to thank everybody I who's been here with us today. And I pass the floor on to uh, um, Palaviji. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Madan. Uh, I would first like to just mention ki Ashwa. Why is the name Ashwagandha to this herb? It is because when you break the root, it gives a smell like of the horse. And uh, it also gives the energy, uh, the bull uh, to a person. So that's why Ashwa means a horse. And as Dr. Pranit was saying, ki, uh, it gives uh, muscle uh, power, you know, to sarcopenic pe uh, patients. So to the general masses, they should know what is the meaning of Ashwa. So uh, International Ayurvedic League is a WhatsApp group where uh, Dr. Harish Varmaji has knitted all the jewels uh, in that necklace. And uh, on behalf of that, and 75th Amrut Mahatsav, the independence celebration, which is on, uh, we have decided to deliver 75 lectures. So I thank Dr. Harish Ji uh, for being so instrumental in bringing all these people together. Dr. Satish <clears throat> Thakkar Ji from Canada India Foundation, who is such a support. Uh, I have no words to thank him. Uh, I also thank uh, Canadian College of Ayurveda and Yoga, <laughs> Canada uh, uh, Consulate of India, Consulate General of uh, India in Canada and uh, Association of Ayurvedic Ad Academy, European Ayurvedic Aca uh, Association and special thanks to our uh, guest Timothy Vetangula who took his time and uh, sharing his very valuable inputs that how uh, 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 economic, uh, uh, simple way or uh, a cheap way of uh, treating uh, in a uh, in a what to say cheap uh, 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 way of uh, providing medical services to the masses in Africa, and uh, very good inputs we have got from Mahesh Mahalingam who who also mentioned prevention which is the basic concept of uh, swastasya swastha rakshanam aturasya rog prashaman that prevention is the main uh, thing which is uh, adopted by ayurveda which dr Mah uh, mr mahesh malingam mentioned so we have had very valuable inputs i also thank dr venkat and joshi and a big thanks to tathastu uh, today, Gregory Balaji is not with us, uh, so I'm sure he will join us in due course. And a big thanks to Y Media and Pravasi Television. And of course, to Madanji for being such a good moderator and bringing so much liveliness in the sessions. 
And of course, uh, with all this, uh, I apologize if I've missed out on anybody. Shriman Narendraji, thank you very much for being with us. And uh, uh, a real, um, to our special uh, speakers today, Dr. Pranit Ambulkar and Dr. Gurudat Amin, well done. A big applause to you all. And thank you very much. Next week, we are speaking on Kanchanar Google. So expecting everybody's participation with full force. And thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar ji.